So basically, it is nestled around Chilika Lake. So basically, the Chilika Lake bird sanctuary is nestled around the Chilika Lake. Good morning, students. Welcome back to Plutus IS. Right. Uh, yesterday, we have discussed the uh, national parks. National parks. And uh, in continuation with that, today we are going to discuss the wildlife sanctuaries. Wildlife sanctuaries. Right. So there are a lot many questions comprising uh, these things, national parks, wildlife uh, sanctuaries. And tomorrow we are going to discuss one more topic, biosphere reserves. Biosphere reserves. Right. So these are, these are important mechanisms when it comes to conservation of wildlife and even uh, flora, the plant biodiversity. So, in combination of these three things, there are lot many questions have been asked in the past. When we see the previous questions, we can understand this aspect. So, try to focus and uh, gain as much information as possible because these all these things are important. Questions are being asked from the combination of these three things: national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and the biosphere reserves. Right? Yesterday we have uh, we have seen national parks, and today we will try and understand the wildlife sanctuaries right so similar to the national parks the wildlife sanctuaries they are also demarcated under the wildlife wildlife protection act so basically the basis for national parks and as well as the wildlife sanctuaries uh, is the wildlife protection act of 1972 so basically the nature will be the core area will be comprised of natural parks and the surrounding area the vast geography that is covered uh, through the wildlife sanctuaries. Wildlife sanctuaries. So the other area, other aspect that is biosphere reserves. So the broader area, other than the wildlife sanctuaries, I mean more than the wildlife sanctuaries, that will be designated as biosphere reserve. Biosphere reserve. So about uh, there is a program by UNESCO. Uh, the program is called MAB, Man and Biosphere Program. So, under the Man and Biosphere Program, the biosphere uh, resource, biosphere resource will be designated. Tomorrow, we will see about that. So, basically, the core area, it is well protected. Uh, many rules and regulations are there. Generally, people are not allowed to enter into the national park. Wildlife area uh, comprises uh, the surrounding areas of national parks. There are some uh, liberal, uh, liberal uh, the rules are liberal, people can enter these areas. So, grazing that kind of collection of leaves, wagara, wagara, that things, uh, that uh, type of activities are permitted. Similarly, the further broad area is biosphere reserve. So, it is to harmonize, harmonize the community, communities, uh, who are living there in the forest traditionally plus the wildlife right so biosphere reserves are there to harmonize the relationship between the li communities living there uh, throughout the centuries traditionally and the wildlife existing in there so this is the broad mechanism of the protection of wildlife so we have studied yesterday we have studied national parks today we will study and understand the wildlife sanctuaries so the basis for uh, protection of uh, demarcation of wildlife sanctuaries is uh, the wildlife protection act of 1972 so the total in total now at present there are 573 wildlife sanctuaries are there so yesterday we have understood there are 106 106 national parks are there so 106 national parks are there 573 wildlife sanctuaries are there right so basically the wildlife sanctuaries, 573 wildlife, wildlife sanctuaries, they are comprising of 3.76 percentage of the total geographical area of the country. So, the wildlife sanctuaries are covering 3.76 percentage of total geographical area of India. So, these are some of the facts. Try to remember these facts. 
So right, yesterday we have discussed uh, important national parks. So basically we have understood that national parks are comprised of, they are subsumed under the wildlife sanctuaries. So uh, in continu continuation to the ye uh, yesterday's uh, discussion, we will understand the particular national park or wildlife sanctuary and the key species, important species conserved there. So, I mean, there are a lot many questions from this aspect also. So, I try to collect the uh, key, key species uh, related to that part particular national park or biosphere user. Right. So, we will see the list of the particular national park or bio, uh, wildlife sanctuary and the species, key species related to that particular national park or wildlife sanctuary. So, first of all, Dachigam National Park. So, it is uh, situa situated in Jammu and Kashmir. Here, the key species or rare species which are which are being protected are Hangul and musk deer. So, uh, try to remember these species. Hangul, when it comes to Jammu and Kashmir and the national park, Hangul is the rare species. Next is Corbett, Jim Corbett National Park. Yesterday, we have studied. It is located in Uttarakhand. Here, the key species are tiger, elephant, panther and deer. Next, Dudwa National Park. It is located in Uttar Pradesh. So, the, here elephant and the tiger are key species. Next is Kanha National Park. It is in Madhya Pradesh. Here, the key species are Bengal tiger and Bhara Singha. We also call it as Swamp Deer. Right. Next is Bandipur National Park. It is located in Karnataka. Here, Bengal tiger and Bhara Singha. We also call it as Deer. Deer or antelope. So, here the key species or rare species are tiger and bara singa. Next is Periyar National Park. It is located in Kerala. Here the elephants are the keys or rare species. Next is Bharatpur. It is uh, located in Rajasthan. Here <coughs> many different types of water birds are uh, the rare species. Next one is Desert National Park. It is located in Rajasthan. Here, desert, desert wolf and fox, these are the key species. Next is Gir National Park. It is located in uh, Saurashtra region of uh, Gujarat. And here, Asiatic lion and panther, cheetal. So, these are important species. So, most important species in this park is Asiatic lion. Yesterday, we have seen. Right. Next is Kaziranga National Park. It is located in Assam. So, one hand rhino, it is the key species here in the Kaziranga National Park. Similar to that, tiger and wild buffalo are also important species here. Next is Manas National Park. It is also located in Assam. Here, the key species are Asiatic elephant, one hand rhino, and wild buffalo. Next is Namdafa uh, Wildlife Sanctuary or uh, Namdafa National Park. It is located in Arunachal Pradesh. Here the key species are tiger, gaur or we call it also call it as Indian bison and wild buffalo. Next is Sundarbans. It is located in West Bengal. West Bengal. Here the key uh, species is Royal Bengal Tiger. Right. So these are some of the important national parks or uh, wildlife sanctuaries and uh, the key species related to that particular national park. Please try to remember this list because uh, in previously, previously there have been a lot of questions linking the national park with the key species there. Right. Now we will continue our discussion about the wildlife sanctuaries. So I have taken some important wildlife uh, sanctuaries and uh, try to discuss the important aspects about those wildlife sanctuaries. First one is uh, Bharatpur uh, Bird Sanctuary. It is also wildlife sanctuary. Sanctuary. So it is basically Bharatpur sanctuary is famous for uh, birds. So it is also called as Bharatpur bird sanctuary. Right. You can see the beautiful birds here. So <laughs> it is transformed into Kioladio National Park. So Bharatpur sanctuary earlier it was wildlife sanctuary. Now it is also converted into National Park, Kioladio National Park. So it is located in Bharatpur district of Rajasthan. So it was basically established in 1956. It is it has an area of 29 square kilometers of protected area. So it is famous for birds, avian inhabitants. 
so try to remember this uh, fact so it is basically famous for birds avians so it is uh, it serves as a crucial wintering ground for a myriad of migratory bird species so it is it serves as a the bharatpur serves as a resting ground for the uh, the migratory birds which are coming from the central asia and siberian region so it is situated along the central asian flyway flyway is from where the by uh, the, the route of the birds which are migrating from the central asian region to the asian region or for that matter to the southern sphere southern hemisphere so the bharatpur is located on the central asian flyway right so it is a pivotal stopover important sto stopover for the birds uh, which are migrating right so basically the uh, the birds are traveling from siberia the cold desert and uh, central asia and europe so find a refuge in its unique ecosystem so basically for the birds which are migrating from these areas from siberia central asia and europe it serves as a resting place right so basically features when we see the features it characterized by marshy wetlands shallow lakes and dense vegetation so this is very much suitable for uh, resting and breeding of the birds right so it is basically recognized as a uh, so the efforts of the conservation efforts have been recognized by the unesco and it is recognized as a unesco world heritage site right so the basically the site has been recognized as a unesco world heritage site right next is another very very important uh, sanctuary chilka lake bird sanctuary so we will also call it as chilka wildlife sanctuary right so basically it is a home for wide uh, variety of birds so we also call it as chilka lake bird sanctuary right so it is uh, situated on the eastern coast of india in the state of odisha odisha so for the purpose of environment and ecology chilka lake comes many a times it comes many a times it also famous uh, it uh, it also famous when we discuss about the torta uh, when we discuss about the uh, olive ridley titles ridley olive ridley turtles and uh, some species of crocodiles so many times the uh, response to uh, the reference to chilka lake will come so try to remember this chilka lake right so basically it is situated in the coastal uh, coastal areas of odisha district right <coughs> so basically it is nested around chilka lake so basically the chilka lake bird sanctuary is nested around the chilka lake right so it is also home to migratory birds a um, lot many migratory birds right chilka lake is the largest coastal lagoon in india try to remember this far so its uh, area is around 1100 square kilometers so comprising Uh, make this as the chilka lake as the largest coastal lagoon in the uh, india right so it is located along the east asian australian flyway so yes previously when we were discussing bharatpur we have seen one flyway so this is the another flyway the chilka lake is located along the eastern asian and australian flyway so makes it as a key resting and a feeding ground for migratory birds right so it is also home to many kinds of uh, bird species hosting imp uh, impressive variety of bird species including flamingo flamingos pelicans storks and numerous waterfowl so these are some of the birds which uh, visit the the particular uh, bird sanctuary chilka lake bird sanctuary right next is chinar wildlife sanctuary right so it is uh, located in the western ghats of kerala so chinar wildlife sanctuary is located in kerala so especially in the western ghats right so it was uh, established in 1984 it spans across it eastern slope of western ghats so it is basically if these are western ghats it is towards the 
eastward side of western ghats right right so it is renowned for diverse flora and fauna show causing a unique blend of both peninsular and the western ghat elements right so when it comes to uh, uh, wildlife biodiversity we can see lot many varieties of elements uh, elephants gors spotted deer uh, langurs and a vibrant array of bird life contribute to the sanct sanctuary's ecological tapestry right so the elusive and endangered grizzled gaunt squirrel is among the notable inhabitants here so try to remember this in endangered species the chinar wildlife sanctuary is home to grizzled gaunt squirrel uh, basically it is endemic to this particular uh, western ghats region right so basically when we see the landscape so it is comprised of dry thorn forest uh, riparian vegetation along the pamban river and grasslands so basically it is adjacent to the pamban river so it is habitat foster this habitat fosters a variety of wildlife creating a dynamic intricate ecological balance within the sanctuary right these are some of the aspects about the chinar wildlife sanctuary next important sanctuary gir national park and wildlife sanctuary so this gir national park is part and parcel of this particular wildlife sanctuary right so it is located in gujarat uh, saurashtra region of gujarat right so it is home to majestic asian lions so it is the rare and important species in the uh, gir national park so it was established in 1965 it is around this area is around 1412 square, square kilometers it is crucial habitat for apart from asiatic lions various other species are taking uh, homage here right the park is globally renowned for being the last abode of asiatic lion so it is the last uh, last abode i mean the asiatic lions are only present in gir, gir national park at present so there are some discussions about the uh, reintroducing this asiatic lion in some of the national parks or uh, wildlife sanctuaries in india but the authorities who are overseeing this uh, gir national park they are not ready because the density has increased in this particular park the density is increased uh, because earlier the number of asiatic lions was uh, declining very fast so due to the conservation conservation efforts the number has increased in a lot uh, at present there are around 600 uh, asiatic lions so the number is increasing fast so there are uh, experts are suggesting that these asiatic lions have to be introduced uh, some in some other other areas also but the authorities who are always overseeing this park are not ready so we will see what happens in the future try to remember this aspect that asiatic lion is the key species here and only asiatic lions are present and confined to this, this particular wildlife area right so it is located in the kathiawar peninsula or saurashtra region of gujarat so it is a vital refuge for the this particular endangered species asiatic lions right so apart from asiatic lions it is also home to leopards hyenas crocodiles and a variety of deer species coexisting within the sanctuary uh, sanctuary's varied ecosystem right similarly uh, it is home to uh, deciduous deci deci when we see the landscape it is home to right when we see the floral um, flora and the ecosystem so basically the landscape if we see it is home to deciduous forest scrublands and the grassy expanses providing diverse habitat for its inhabitants so basically it is the landscape comprises of deciduous forests and scrublands right next is next another important wildlife sanctuary that is govind wildlife sanctuary so it is located in the uttarakhand uttarkasi district of uttarakhand right <coughs> it is a uh, crucial part of the larger govind pashu vihar wildlife sanctuary and national park so basically govind wildlife sanctuary is part and parcel of uh, the govind pashu vihar wildlife sanctuary and 
National Park. So it is established in 1955, right? <clears throat> so basically, when we see the biodiversity, biodiversity is representative of the unique biodiversity found in the Himalaya region, right? Uh, it is home to variety of plant species, including alpine meadows. Try to remember whenever we talk about Himachal Pradesh or Uttarakhand. So they are located in the alpine region. Alpine region. So this type of climatic conditions come because of the uh, the elevation of the Himalayas because they are uh, located on the elevations are uh, foot foot steps and uh, at the elevated levels of himalayas so because of this elevation the alpine climatic conditions will appear in these two states himalaya and uttara himachal pradesh and uttarakhand region so basically the govind wildlife sanctuary is also characterized by alpine meadows uh, coniferous forests and medicinal herbs creating a rich tapestry of vegetation so when we see the faunal diversity, so the animals existing here are Him Himalayan thar, snow leopards, musk deer, and a variety of elephants are among the notable fauna here. So here, when we see the landscape, it is home to alpine meadows and a dense coniferous forest. So try to remember this part also. Next is Mudumalai Sanctuary. So it is located in the Situated in the Nilgiri hills of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, right? So <clears throat> it was established in 1940 and uh, area 321 square kilometers. <coughs> so when we see the ecosystem, so it is comprised of varied ecosystems encompassing moist deciduous forest, grasslands, and tropical evergreen evergreen forest. So it is comprising of variety of landscapes, including decidu uh, moist deciduous forests, grasslands, and tropical evergreen evergreen forests. Right. When we see the uh, species, key species here, elephants are there, tigers are there, leopards, gores, and the numerous bird species are also existing there. It is making it as a hotspot of wildlife. So it is making it as the one of the uh, India's wildlife hotspots. So it is basically a heaven to the elephants. So the sanctuary is particularly known for its significant population of Asiatic elephants. So try to remember this aspect. Mudumalai uh, Wildlife Sanctuary is uh, home to its largest uh, large number of Asiatic uh, elephants. Similarly, it provides as a vital corridor for the movement of these uh, uh, Asian games. Uh, Asiatic uh, elephants between the Western Guards and the Eastern Guards. So basically, the Mudubalai uh, Wildlife Sanctuary acts as a corridor between the uh, Eastern Guards and the Western Guards for the movement of Asiatic elephants. So basically, you know, for elephants, elephants they need a larger area to uh, they keep on moving from one area to another area. So for that, we need corridors. Corridor. So many corridors have been designated and identified for the movement of elephants. Uh, in later classes, we will try and see the elephant corridors also. So basically, the Mudumalai acts as a critical uh, corridor for elephants for movement of ele elephants between the Eastern Guards and Western Guards. Similarly, many kinds of birds also can be seen here, including Malabar trogon, crested hawk eagle, and various water flow falls so these kinds of birds can be uh, seen here so it is also known as the silent valley a highlight of mudbalai is uh, enchanting silent valley an area devoid of vehicle traffic so basically it is also known as silent there is a national park also within the this uh, biosphere is a silent valley national park so it is devoid of vehicle traffic Tra vehicles are not allowed here. So, in that uh, silence, we can better hear the sounds of the nature and birds. Next is Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary. So, the elephants are the key species here in that uh, wildlife sanctuary also. Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary. 
So it is also situated and nestled in the Western Ghats of Kerala. <laughs> it is also established in 1950, approximately covering 925 square kilometers. Right. So the attraction, major attraction here is the Lake Periyar. Periyar Lake. It is also a famous wetland. Right. So a defining feature of this sanctuary is the expansive Periyar Lake which is not only enhances the scenic beauty of the region, but also it serves as a crucial water source, source to this particular wildlife sanctuary. Right. So, the wildlife sanctuary, it is known for the sizable population of Indian elephants here. Right. Similarly, apart from ele elephant, other wildlife uh, residing here is tigers, leopards, gores, sambar deer and the numerous bird species. Right. When we see the ecosystem, the landscape, so the landscape is ranging from tropical evergreen, evergreen forest to grasslands. So, the when we see the ecosystem landscape, it is ranging from evergreen, tropical evergreen forest to grasslands. So, the famous, another famous attraction here is boat rafting. So, Perial Wildlife Sanctuary offers a un, unique activities such as bamboo, rafting right similarly uh, when we see the involvement of community in the preservation of wildlife here so periha periyar has been the forefront of community based conservation effort so community community has been successfully uh, intervened here for the preservation of the wildlife right next is sariska wildlife sanctuary it is located in rajasthan so, it is located in the Aravali ranges, ranges of Rajasthan. It is established in 1955. Right. So, famous attraction here is and the key species is Royal Bengal Tiger. Other fauna included uh, residing here is leopards, stripped hyenas, sambar deer, uh, some uh, are some of the other attractive wildlife here. Right. So, when we see the topography, it features hills, forests and grasslands and creates an ideal environment for supporting rich tapestry of flora and fauna. Similarly, the Sariska also has some historical significance. So, the Sariska is adorned, adorned with historical ruins including the 10th century Kankwari fort. So, the remains of the 10th century Kankwari fort are uh, within the periphery of this particular wildlife. Sanctuary. So, when we see the landscape diversity, it ranges from dry deciduous forests, rugged hills, and rocky terrain. So, this provides a distinct setting for diverse ecosystems within the sanctuary. So, here you can see tiger safari, and people are enjoying the view of the uh, famous Royal Bengal tigers. So, right. So, these are some of the important wildlife sanctuaries. So, we have seen there are more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries in India. So, it is not impossible to cover all the wildlife sanctuaries. From your side, you yourself try to find uh, some more wildlife sanctuaries and try to know some information about them. So, whatever I thought important wildlife sanctuaries, I try to cover in this class. Right. Now, we will see some uh, questions which are asked previously. First question, it is asked in 2020. The question is, which of the following protected areas is well known for the conservation of a subspecies of the Indian swamp deer, Barasinga, that thrives well on hard ground and is exclusively gramivorous. Gramivorous is which eats grass. Right, right. So, the options are Kanha National Park, Manas National Park, Mudumalai Wildlife Sanctuary, Tal Chapar Wildlife Sanctuary. So, yesterday we have seen Kanha National Park is most famous for the Bara Singha. Uh, it is also known as Indian Swamp Deer. So, the answer is Kanha National Park. So, in this way, you have to remember a particular wildlife sanctuary or a national park and the key species associated with that particular national park. Right. Next answer, next question is it is asked in 2015. Which of the following states is in which of the following states is Pakui Wildlife Sanctuary is located? So the options are Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, and Nagaland. Right. 
this particular sanctuary, Pakui Wildlife Sanctuary, we did not cover. But you should be aware of the location of the national parks or wildlife sanctuaries also. So basically, this particular wildlife sanctuary is located in Arunachal Pradesh. Right. So try to remember the states associated with the particular national park or the wildlife sanctuaries also. Right. So this is all for today. I hope you have gained some important information. Uh, this is all for today. See you. See you next time. Until then. Bye.